we are back for another day of punishment. More pipe. We got more pipe and we got fittings. We got beautiful weather. All kinds of stuff. We got more buckets. We got all kinds of options today, Mr. Millennial. NYA Millennial. You know how many comments I get? If DP would say it right, we'd find you quicker. <laughs> My plan is working. Yeah, it is. So here's the plan right off the bat. We got to put some eight inch back on the trailer. Chris has this left over from last year. It's a partial roll of eight inch. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to do what we need to do. If not, we do have a whole nother row of eight inch over there. So that's our backup plan. But anyways, we're gonna let, uh, let the spool down, get that core off. They do charge us a core fee on those, if anybody's wondering. Get that core off, get this partial on. We'll head down there and get those last two runs of eight inches up to the ditch there. And then uh, and at some point we got to spur off and start catching some six inch stuff. So let's load up. There she be. All right, pipe is loaded. We got fittings loaded on the trailer, buckets all loaded up. Let's head across the uh, head across the field and see what we got. Hopefully, we can get across this field without getting stuck. It's a famous last words. I'm gonna go with, uh, that's not gonna be enough pipe to make two runs down through there. That may be enough to make one run. I don't think it's gonna make the second run. One way to find out, we'll spool her out and see what we got. We're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday. Go ahead and roll out the one on this side of the ditch first. I think the end of our pipe. Yeah, I think you're good there. The, uh, I'd say whenever you get out there, just kind of pull it on the highway and cut it. We, gotta, we need to make sure we have enough to get to the ditch. It's gonna be close on pipe. It's gonna be close. While well, Matt's up there getting the towel cart situated, we're gonna go ahead and hop in this old girl and get her fired up. Start digging some trenches. Yep. Here we go, moment of truth on whether or not we got enough pipe. It is going to be close. It is going to be close. <laughs> oh, it's hard to tell from here, but I'd say it's within 20 feet. Maybe we'll gain 20 feet by the time we get her thrown down the ditch. See what we got. All right, guys, we are pretty much to the end of the run here. We're going to be about uh, 10 feet short on that pipe and about 10 feet long on this pipe. You'll figure. But I'm going to dig the last little bit back here. We're actually sitting in the middle of the highway. 
There's an orange phone box right there. We've had this located. The old phone line runs right here, so we might hit it. But the new phone line's on the other side of the road. So if we do hit it, they said don't worry about it. That's always the uh, famous last words. It's not a busy road, so. I'm gonna go down and start backfilling a little bit. Yeah, I have some good news. What's that? If we put a T in up there, we do have another cover. That's why I told you to put a T in, genius. Of course you had that idea. I'm gonna start backfilling a little bit and then we'll set the laser up. We'll probably have to run grade up through there. Six inch? So six inch, yeah. So if you want to get that plumbed up and then uh, go get that roll of six inch on. Okay. I guess start off with that partial roll. There's a partial roll up there. Okay. We'll burn it up first. Okay, it's on the other side. Yep. Got you. Since we're working close to the shop here, I went ahead and just grabbed the uh, grabbed the five foot smooth face bucket. It's definitely a lot quicker for uh, backfill. I want to be a little bit ex extra careful with that eight inch pipe. You guys do. <laughs> in the last video it's a little bit easier to collapse not about mad spinning there that's a big bucket compared to what we're used to spinning with all right still race the dirt in what i want to do here is just rake it a little bit at a time try to bust that up make sure we don't have any big big claws on top of it i kind of see that pipe down there i want to make sure that pipe it's got too much water in it, it's going to start to flow. Let's make sure it don't flow. Once we got a little bit of dirt in on top of it, we can go for it. Like those big clumps right there, if you're not careful, they're right on the pipe. It'll mess it up. This is what the end of this looks like after we got it plumbed up. 
we got two eight inches there we didn't put a riser on top of them we got what they call a bird cage or that's what we call them the bird cage anyway so in theory one eight inch will catch the water coming that way the other eight inch will catch the water coming this way could we have possibly just ran like one 10 or 12 inch pipe down through here yes but it's quite a bit more expensive to do that and we can tee off this one to, to catch other little bleeders and stuff so me and Chris discussed that we kind of follow this, just run a double, a double eight inch up here and we catch it that way. So that's pretty much the run on this one. We got the dirt right, loosely raked back on top of it. I still got a little bit to do that way. But Matt's getting the laser set up. We're going to tee into this thing right here. And I think we're going to put the trench bucket in. We're going to take off with a six inch and kind of go along the edge of the woods up there to where we've got a ditch coming out and uh, catch a few bleeders and uh, hopefully, catch, hopefully catch that ditch. This field is way flatter than what it looks. We're gonna set the laser up, put a little slope on it, and uh, take off running. Well, since we're going to six inch, and the dirt seems to be halfway decent, I think we're gonna try our luck at the old trenching bucket here again, and see what happens. But if the dirt is right, the stars are aligned, this thing is the ticket. See what happens. So I think we got her got her set up here. Matt's got our six inch teed into our eight inch. We kind of dug a little uh, bleeder back with the uh, two foot bucket here, so he's got room to get down there and work. He's going to get that tweaked around. We got the laser set up to that depth. We actually went up, which is hard to see now. It's on the other side of the tractor up there. We went up there and shot an elevation. We got about four foot of fall. So we actually set slope on the laser. If you guys want to know how we did that. We did that a couple of videos back. I kind of went over that in detail. So we got the trenching bucket fired up here. We're going to start knifing some in and see how this goes. Put these in there so we don't run them over. Wherever you're good with right up here against the window. Thank you. All right, here we go. This looks like all knifed in here nice and pretty.
give you guys a little bit of a recap here at the end of the day, man. Check that out. That six inch tile fits down in that trench like a champ. That thing works absolutely awesome with the dirt track. But we are getting her. Got some water showing up in the hole down there. We gotta go where the tractor's at up right there, but it is uh, it is getting late on a Friday. We got there a late start today with some other stuff going on. Actually, I helped Captain Cleman pour his boat this morning. So if you guys haven't seen that, jump over to Captain Cleman's channel and check out his boat we poured. But guys, we're gonna wrap her up here for today. You stay tuned, don't go anywhere. We'll be back down here Monday, get the rest of this pipe ran, and uh, maybe get this one finished up. All right, guys, it is Monday after the Friday we worked here last. It is another beautiful day. Matt's getting the uh, 120 all greased up. Don't miss any. You're gonna put grease on my head, aren't you? Uh -huh. We got Jerry down here. We traded out the uh, traded out the 850 for the D4. He's over there cleaning up, uh, cleaning up that double eight inches run up through there. We're gonna finish up the six inch. I'm gonna make Todd from Trucker Track proud here. Somebody bit my life. Oh, that's hard to do while you're holding the camera. Huh. You can beat on it better with two hands. Yeah. Great fabrication work. That's perfect. Way. You're gonna go work. Hi. Well guys, just like that, it's kind of like magic. Except for the part where I actually did all the work when the camera wasn't rolling. We are to the end of this long run. You might see Matt backing up there. He went to get the uh, tee and the riser. Let me finish out this last little piece of the ditch here. I'll kind of show you what our uh, kind of show you what our plan is here. This is a long field, man. It's a long way across this thing. Though, the trenching bucket is working perfect. Working perfect, I tell you. All right, let me see where I'm at here. Uh, what do you think? A little more right there. I think you need about 10 more feet. 10 more feet, he says. I think he's full of crap, but we'll take 10 more feet to make him happy. That may make more sense having 10 more feet. That puts me far enough around this corner whenever Chris comes down here playing. He can continue painting straight and then go around the edge of our dam here. So, don't tell Matt, but he's probably right. What's going on guys right there there's a small little ditch that comes out of the woods and they actually cut a ditch through the field here that goes out to the road ditch keep in mind that water that hits the road ditch is going to go down the road ditch then go in our eight inch pipe and then go out and right here in front of the uh machine right there is another small trench another small ditch that comes out of the woods and they had done the same thing it's right behind the truck they cut it up. actually it's right there cut it over it goes down the ditch and back in our pipe so what we're planning on doing here is is we're going to cut a water bar from that one over to here put a small little retention area here put a riser in and we're just going to pipe it straight to our eight inch pipe which should help keep a little bit of water off the road ditch and keep water out of the field it's kind of the plan so that's our plan whenever it rains we'll find out whether it works or not there's water coming out the end of the pipe it's Oh, that's good news. Is your pipe big enough, though? You know, that's always a legit question. <laughs> that is a legitimate question. I know we laid a bunch of pipes. Uh, I'm talking about the orange pipe, by the way. <laughs>
Good thing you're not paying to cut that straight. About the greatest cut I've ever made. Oh, well, look at that. Beaver, beaver chewed that off. I don't know if I could even edit that one straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, them stickers. There. So our small hole riser is basically just an extension to get us to ground level for the big hole riser. Let me, uh, let me clean that out just a little bit so it sits flat. Or you can just adjust them six inches. Beautiful. Well, you want to head all the way down there? We got one small one to do on that far end. Yeah, I don't think it's worth opening up. I like to run eight up here. I hate to bust that whole new row of eight open for 50 feet. 50 feet. So I think we're just going to do six and keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Matt decided instead of re rolling his pipe, he's just, <laughs> he's just going to drag it. I think he's gonna end up catching me in the leg and he's gonna drag me into the drag over there. there so I'm really hoping the two foot bucket is down ah I think I see it I got one excavator like six buckets on this job that is not the two foot bucket there's the bucket we're looking for we'll take that one please Stopped here to check on Jerry on our way across the field. And this is all turning out really nice. This was, I don't know if you guys remember that we took these trees out. This was an absolute swamp right here. And uh, that drain tile has done wonders in here as far as getting this, uh, getting this dried up. It's hard to, it's just so hard to do anything with all this sod stuff on here. But if Jerry can get it this close, Chris and them will come in here and hit this a few times with the disc. And they uh, should be in pretty good shape. But anyways, off the back. Man, it is crazy. Crazy. It was like two days ago you were stuck in a swamp and that's almost all dried out now. Yeah, look at that spot right over there where it was holding water. Starting to crack. It's <laughs> crazy how much that pipe has drained that out. Anyways, sidetracked. We still got one. As you guys can see, we got water running out of the woods and going down in our pipe there. If somebody would have been thinking when they were backfilling this, been nice they probably up. would have left your pipe exposed, but it's hard to find good operators these days, and he didn't do that for you. But what we got, this is going to be a short little run. You guys can see this ditch coming out of the woods. We're going to go on up in there, catch that water right off the bat, and then uh, probably build a dry dam up there and put a riser in. So first things first, I swear I just saw a snake right there. I don't know where it went, but I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're looking on the ground. It went that way. Well, I'm about the worst person in the world to go snake searching because the only good snake's a dead snake, and there's only one kind of snake, and that's a copper-headed rattle moccasin. So. <laughs> well, I think you're careful. Copper-headed rattle moccasin. I swear I've seen him that way. I don't know where he went. Big, little. I don't know. i just seen him slither off. Yeah. I'm going to go back in my big yellow snake killing machine. All right, first things first is we got to find that eight inch pipe on this side, get it teed off, and then uh, we'll uh, plow our way on up the ditch here. Well, let's see if Mike can re-expose the eight inch without hitting it.
a little closer. See it right there. Exposed. Pipe guys, what I did is I squared the machine up to it. Got a notch out here in front of it, we might can get a little bit of it with this a hand shovel. But I'm probably gonna have to go and dig a long ways with it so he can get uh, get enough loose pipe, get enough loose pipe where he can get that T in. Pipe looks like it's in pretty good shape yet, ain't it? One more time. Pipe looks like it's in pretty good shape yet. Well, sure hope it's, brand new. <laughs> it's got water in it. It does have water in it. Lots of it. So why does that pipe have water in it? Let me explain. Do you guys remember whenever we took out that big tree down there at the outlet? We talked about how flat it was across there. What we did was we shot the neighbor's culvert pipe going underneath his driveway, and that's the elevation we started our ditch off in. What we noticed the other day when it started filling up, water was backing up our pipe, and the culvert going underneath the neighbor's driveway is pitched the wrong way like a foot. It's got water backed up our tie line. I talked to Chris. Chris talked to the neighbor. It's not a dire strait to do it right now, but I think we're gonna, Chris has offered to replace the culvert pipe for the neighbor we get it pitched the right way. We should allow all that to drain out. But, uh, so that's why we got a little bit of water backed up in our pipe. It's not because our uh, pitch or our slope's off. Yeah. Give me a hole, get that water out of it. You're awful needy. That'd be greatly appreciated. I hate to tell you, but I can't dig, I can't dig a big deep enough hole for that. Over here. Can't dig a big, you're, you're just gonna have to get your feet wet there, buddy. Hey, it's a good day to be an operator. Yeah. I was just explaining why you have water there. Oh, yeah. Because of the culvert pipe? Yeah. It's not a good day to be mad. All right, so while he's doing that, we're going to finish digging our way on up to the woods here. All right, sorry. Got sidetracked by Captain Cleman. Matt did manage to get his did manage to get his pipe in there without uh I remember it's full of water. So Why don't you just get out of the way so I don't get you wet? Come on this side. That ain't gonna work. I don't know if I can hold it there. Get that scrap piece of pipe out of there. I was putting it in there for a surprise for the next guy. We don't the next the next guy's probably gonna be us. We don't need surprises. We got a little bit of dirt on there to hold this connection together. You like it? Yeah. Oh, it worked, shouldn't it? One more. 
Alright, watch out, I'm gonna get it right where you're standing. Figure way on up in the woods here. Make sure we're lined up. Nope, we are definitely not lined up. No, we're lined up. So Mike has gotten a little aggravated with the vines in the woods all the way from the top of that sucker. Dragging them away. And I think it just blew a hydraulic line. Stay tuned for some more. I'm not a real smart guy, but I think the leaks in this area are right in there somewhere. <laughs> always something, always something. I caught that line on a tree a while back clearing. It was actually up around the water tire job. And uh, I was just gonna leave it alone. And I was doing good until the, until the vine like wrapped around it and said, uh, take a piece of that so anyways we'll take her up shop get her welded up get her back on matt went to get a couple tools and uh hopefully get it fixed Ugh, always something whammo 15 minutes later there it is it's good as new can you guys even tell where it was broke or bent or welded hopefully not we'll do a do a little pressure check here and make sure we're good She's good, bud. Your distance is still away from the machine shows the confidence in my work. Well, I wanted to make sure and get a really clear shot. <laughs> Back to work. Well, I got myself wedged up here in the woods. This is the end of the pipe. Right there in that ditch. Hopefully. Get myself wedged back out of here. That right there should do her. Let Matt throw a riser in there, we'll backfill that and work our way out. All right, sir, is that where you want it? Where I want it. Where, where do you want me to back up first? I'm gonna go down there up here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can walk myself out of here and I'm gonna do it from the other side of you.
You made it! Alright, let's get this sucker held up so he can backfill it. We head to the other end of the field here guys this is what it looks like after it's all said and done so jerry's going to come in here with the dozer now and uh, get us a little dry damn built he should be able to still we got quite a bit of dirt right over in there and a little bit right here but hopefully that'll get this area dried up you can see all the all the water right there he's got the main ditch line down through there looking really good i'll get you guys some better shots of that for the videos over i'm i'm just bum fuzzled by how well that's actually turning out uh, we first started on this job i thought there's a reason why this is pasture. There ain't no way he's going to be able to farm this. But I think he's got a fighting chance. I think he's got a fighting chance. So we're going to head up to the other end of the field. Uh, Matt's got to run here after lunch. And I need his help. Then one more thing. we got a culvert pipe we got to put in. He needs a new entrance in off the highway. So uh, I'm going to have Matt help me get that pipe in. And then we'll come back and help Jerry finish out the day. Oh, forget it. Oh, I forgot. You gotta come back and get the tractor. Jerry needs fuel. Apparently, Jerry needs fuel. So, Jerry, I said, I thought that dozer ran on good looks. He said, it's out of both. <laughs> Just have to get me the fuel. So, here's one of the last things we gotta do while we're here. This is the old entrance into this field. This is what we've been using to come and go. And it's narrow and it's in the middle of the field, which was fine when they had cattle in here grazing. They were just getting in and out to uh, feed hay and stuff like that. Not a big deal, but since we need to put a new one in anyways, we're gonna move it down to the property line, which is where the 120 is sitting at now. That way, whenever Chris pulls in the field with the tractor or the harvester, he can just go straight into his end rows and uh, take off and keep on going. And then we'll come back and dig that one out. So we're not gonna do anything fancy. We're just gonna kind of scrape out the bottom of the ditch there a little bit and uh throw some pipe down in there grab a little rock throw on it all good we have maybe had four different buckets on this job but you know what I'm pretty sure we have used every bucket we have gotta have the right tools right Whoa, that was so deep here. hang on can't see through the grass We forgot the lube again. That's never good. Hey, 
Hey DP, did you bring the soap? So you can kind of see where I've rubbed my fingers around down there. We're going to use mud as lube because DP forgot the soap. So as you've seen on DP's channel, you're supposed to lubricate this O-ring. So today we use mud. Touch your camera. Not very good. Good look at it. Falls off. I mean, my hands are still clean. Uh huh. That's usual. <laughs> so here's the deal on this, guys. I was supposed to have a load of rock delivered on this job two days ago. I guess it got lost because, uh, as you guys can see, we have no rock. And uh, if you notice right back there, a new blue stinky piece of equipment has showed up, which means these guys are probably gonna fertilize this field tonight and maybe even plant it tomorrow, if not late tonight. So uh, what we're gonna do is I got some dry dirt straight back up off this bank. I think we can get that culvert pipe covered it up, covered up enough with some dry dirt. They can get in and out of the field, do what they need to do. Hopefully some rock will show up and throw some rock on and call it good. Jerry's still on the dozer. I don't have the skid steer here, but I do have a tractor for the skid steer bucket. <laughs> it's not ideal. We'll make it work. This will be interesting. Me and this tractor, what I'll say it. Me and this tractor have a love hate relationship. An extremely nice tractor, but I absolutely do not care for the hydrostatic transmission. I have tried every setting imaginable, and they all stink. Mostly because it's, I don't know. It's just hard to explain. It's hard to know. But anyway, we got work to do, so we're just going to have to muddle through it and figure it out. I will say this much. The little tractor does have some power, though. Not in that gear, though. I want to show you something Jerry's doing real quick is uh, he's getting ready to backfill this trench here that's got the six inch in it. This one here is pretty good, you know, we got it with a trench and knife and it fits in there nice and tight. He's actually taking the dozer and he's walking back and forth across the spoil pile and he's busting up those big clumps. So we don't have to worry about those big clumps getting down there and damaging that pipe. And now that he's got them, now that he's got them busted up halfway decent. I know there's still some big ones here, but they were three times that size. He's coming back and rolling the dirt over in the trench there. You see him coming at us. So far, so good out of all the pipe we've put in for Chris, which between the last two years is 25,000 plus feet, somewhere in there. We've only had one issue with a collapsed pipe and uh, 
it was it was because of the 850 we kind of knew where the problem was out pretty quick when we had a problem but been pretty fortunate on everything else Well guys, there it is. That's not too bad for a farm tractor, right? That looks somewhat respectable. I did have to kind of finish that in with the excavator because it was uh, too, soft, too soft to drive out in. But uh, we're gonna jump down here on the other side of the tractor. Let's go ahead and tear out that old crossing and get that uh, feathered out. Hopefully our rock shows up, I don't know. I'm about to give up on a rock, but this half of it's drying up with some good dirt in here. I'm pretty confident they can get in, in and out of the field if they need to in a pinch. And they're in a hurry, so let's go uh, rip out that other crossing. Then Jerry wants us to go down and uh, put some finishing touches on the stands with the uh, excavator, so that'll give us a good excuse to go check them out. I don't even know if there's an old pipe in here. I think they just filled in the stitch. Guess we'll find out. Yes, we will find out together. still working on it you guys can see there's basically three little ditches that come out of the woods i explained earlier he's got all three of them draining down to this one he's got some topsoil saved here he's kind of putting on the back side of them so we're gonna let him finish that one up while he's working on getting that one done we're gonna go check the other two and then we'll catch this one on the way uh catch this one on the way back out out there and he can kind of turn and sweep right into that corner looks like jerry's got her lined up pretty good so i can sit there and watch jerry run a dozer all day long but we got stuff we gotta do we gotta go to work all right guys this one here is where those two uh two eight inches come up in the highway ditch here a little bit of debris we need to do something with. This one here is not 
not as much of a dam as it is just kind of filling in the ditch and filling in the field here. Kind of pat this down and kind of critique it around those pipes there just a little bit. Got her looking pretty good to be honest with you. There's that one all polished off guys. So here's kind of the theory behind how this one works. One eight inch pipe is supposed to take the water coming from that way. One eight inch pipe is supposed to take the water coming from this way. We got a little bit of a berm there, but that berm is purposely about six inches lower than the highway. So for some reason, if those pipes fail or we get more water coming down the ditch than we can handle, it's not gonna back up on the highway. It'll then come down to the field again. That may happen. I have a feeling it's going to be a rare occasion, but uh, it don't really disturb the field at all. Chris can pretty much farm straight on through. It eliminates the ditch that runs over a thousand feet through the, through the field. Dries everything up, so hopefully that'll work. Time will tell. That was, that was all good, so let's, uh, let's track down the other one and check it out. All right, guys, this is the other dam here. As you guys can see, Jerry's got it built up and looking pretty good. It was too soft for him to get on the back side, so I'm just gonna kinda go around and uh oh man, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna kinda go around pretty up that inside and kind of pack it in a little bit and uh, make sure it don't cause any issues later. I'll kind of show you what we got. This one here. This one here I think is the one that's gonna catch a lot of water. There's a pretty good little ditch that comes out of the woods there, and there's a spring that pretty much runs all the time. The way Jerry's got this one built, it should overflow right up here before it overflows the center of the dam. So hopefully if we do uh if we do overrun it we can we still be controlled. Check that out guys, no reason why that little dam shouldn't do the trick. That that placement turned out very nicely. It's right in line. With the tree line down through there, it should be big enough to have a little bit of reservoir capacity and a heavy rain. And worst case scenario, we got a notch in the dam over there so it'll kind of run around the end of it, not over the top of it. Should do the trick. Should do the trick. But uh, I don't think I've ever seen tile make as big a difference in a field as what it has in this one. You guys got to remember, two days ago, Matt was right there with the tractor and had it absolutely buried. And now look at it. It is dry it is solid it's farmable which i guess is a good thing because that's what chris is wanting to do here in a few hours so let's track up the other end and uh see what see if jerry's got that air small dam done and uh yeah good news we're running out of stuff to do tell you what jerry's got this dam looking pretty good i don't know if i should even touch it i think i'm just gonna pat down this top a little bit He's got a little bit of a ridge. We're gonna leave it alone. There's the final one, guys. I believe you can get the better look from it on this upper side here. Kind of see, we got uh, the one ditch there, the one ditch there, and one ditch on the end. They all should funnel right down to that, uh, to that riser there. That should work pretty good. And that riser, if you straight lined it, it lines up with the edge of the field then right there in the bend it lines up with the edge of the field right here so that should just be the inside corner of the field so my rock has still not showed up chris is on his way to uh disc this field up so we're gonna we're gonna load up and head on out of here and uh, hopefully it shows up at some point before harvest that'd be nice before harvest but before we leave guys i'm gonna do uh, one last flyover let you guys kind of see the scope of the work we'll call this one a wrap Dip down below the trees here guys you can see farmer Chris already got this this up and ready to plant as I stated before this job 
turned out quite a bit better than I thought it was going to. With all the dead trees down through the middle and as wet as what it was, I wasn't convinced he was going to get it planted this year, but I think he's going to. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, guys, we shall catch you on the next one.